Oh, Lou, it feels good to be back. Man, and we've been waiting. I had a lot of people asking about it. I'm so happy to be back, man. What are really people saying sick. to you? People are like, dude, when are you coming out with a new one's a pod, one's a pod, one's a pod? When are you going to talk about the draft? You know, we looked to you guys to fill us all in. I said, don't worry. We got a plan. We're here. We waited till, you know, free agency in the NFL is so you could have three signings in a day, then you wait a week and blah, blah, blah. So we decided to get it all together for everybody. I think we have some interesting takes on everything. We have a lot. This is not just a draft pod. No, We're doing let's, Steelers. Not, let's not get that twisted up. Little buckos at the end. Have to. Wow. Yeah, have to. They deserve They deserve some airtime. I hope we're doing Buckos in the beginning. Next oh, time. my God. Yes. It's a great, it's but Lou, a great story. But, don't say anything in this pod that might hurt your campaign. I know, right? I got to watch. I got to watch. I got big campaign. Louis for, uh, Louis for AWOL Council. How about that? I don't know. Your enemies are going to be using this against you. I know. This is a public forum. I know they are. But you know what? This is, this is uh, this is a passion of mine, just like my town. Are you so. giving any speeches and throwing some Steeler takes in there, sprinkling them in? Well, I'll tell you this: we had a, a meet and greet for me Thursday. Okay, now mind you, the draft was at eight o'clock. Someone came to me and said, "What are we gonna do hour wise?" I said, "Well, we gotta do five thirty to seven thirty. They're like, "We gotta do five thirty to eight thirty. I said, "No, no, 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 no." We'll do 5.30 to 7.30. I got to be able to watch it. Let's, <laughs> let's not get this twisted How do your here. constituents feel? Yeah. Good. Everyone's good. Every, I, I got some big fans. So they everyone understood. Slogan? Know. Slogan. Well, Curcio for a council right now. A little C playing on a little C. The alliteration. So, yeah. Remember that word, alliteration. That's a, that's a big word for me. <laughs> that's a big word for me. <laughs> All right, Lou. You just teased the draft, so let's do it. Let's get right into it. It's 8 o'clock. You're done with your meeting. Yep. Steelers probably didn't pick in that 30-minute range anyway. Yeah, no. But, but I had to see where everything was going. It starts off pretty hot. Hot? I mean, yeah, like, the, just right off the bat, yeah. the tackle from Tennessee goes, and that shakes everything up. Yeah, so as soon as that happened, that like, was, that was game time. Right. That was interesting to see how I, – I think that's where it was. I think the Steelers were going to use what was taken in front of them and they knew that they knew they had three big needs, and it was how they were going to play it in which order. I think that was dependent on how the draft went. It lo- judging by our second pick, Joey Porter Jr., it seemed like the strategy was if one of the top corners are there, if one of the top tackles are there, or if we can make an incremental move to trade up and go get one of those guys, that's what we'll do. And the Tennessee guy going early just opened that yeah, wide open. It really did. And I think the Steelers knew they had to get ahead of the Jets. Because the Jets were going to take Broderick Jones. Very sneaky by Belichick getting Very, ahead of the division. Oh, round. and all they had to give up was a fourth-round pick. You knew Belichick was like, sure, go ahead and take it. We don't want him in the division. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, Broderick Jones, 6'4", 3'10", great tackle. A mauler out of Georgia. A win- now, I think Georgia's going to be a big point here. Um, winning culture, your new left tackle. Great pick. Here's my take on drafting tackles and yes. just offensive linemen in general. Yes. If we're drafting skill position guys, I'm okay with taking a guy from the MAC. You know, we can dabble in these mid major conferences. Deontay Johnson, Antonio Brown. I mean, just out I of mean, the MAC. He, just out of the MAC. Even the smaller colleges, like we saw the receiver from Boston College go, they're not sure. a football powerhouse. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you can find the skill position guys there. Yep. If we're talking about a big interior trenches guy, mm-hmm. I want someone who's felt force before. Absolutely. I want one of the the big boys from the SEC, the Big Ten. You can't fake force. Like, you, if you're a skill position guy, you might have played against a really fast corner or a really fast and quick receiver. But are, are you really feeling that in the trenches? Yeah. I don't think so. Those guys are noticeably... I agree. Like, they're just physically larger, more forceful people. They're, they're, it's, it's a totally different animal. The SEC trenches... And the Mac 10 trenches are two different sports. They just are. 100%. A totally different animal when you're coming out. You, you have so much more pedigree. You so much, you're, you know, not only was you, Georgia a dominant team, they played in arguably the best conference in, in college football. Big I, boys, big recruits. I like that he's battle tested. Absolutely. All these guys he blocked against are all in the NFL. And not to mention, look, who'd he go against during practice? Jalen Carter. Nolan Smith. I mean, we first round picks in practice. Then all the all the cats he went against in the SEC. You know, the Bam or the Bamas, the Floridas, all that stuff. I love it. I, I really loved it. I think we knocked it out of the park right away. 
Yeah. Omar Khan already came in hot for free agency. Omar Khan. But Omar he, Khan. He turned up the heat right away in the draft. Unbelievable. I mean, didn't expect this. This is a very different. I, I think it's clear that Kevin Colbert had a different mentality on how to run the organization. Not saying it's a bad way, but Omar Khan's approaching us differently. I've never seen the Steelers so active in free agency, which I love. I've never seen the Steelers address all the needs that they need to address in the draft. I, it was really incredible. Well, it watch. starts off two for two. Yep. You know what's funny is like a lot of these GMs or just teams in general, people that work for teams will tell you like, we don't draft for need. We draft the best player available. No, you don't. We well, shouldn't. I, why I mean, would you? But I'm telling you, you hear that a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Why do they say that? Who are I they th- fooling? I think they say that because they look at uh, they look at a first round. Tomlin has said that a lot of times. I think he's a lot of stuff he says is smoke and mirrors. You know what I mean? But it's just like not even a believable thing. No, you'd have to be a fool to believe that. But anyway, right away we address the two. So we go, Broderick we, Jones. I mean, then we Dan, Dan Moore was a little bit better towards the end of the season. We talked a lot about that, but I think everyone still knew we needed a tackle. We needed another offensive you needed lineman. A blind side for Kenny, no doubt. So we go there. And what was I saying all season who I wanted us to draft? Yep. A shutdown corner. Yep. Now, Joey Porter slid a lot. But I thought this was interesting. We 13. were on the clock at 32, which never happens because we're the now. lost pick right. for Tom Brady. Yeah, it, was a, it was a very weird thing to be for the Steelers to be fielding trade calls all night, all day. That's I was just going to say. It's interesting. I like that Omar got to sit back, review all his options, and yes. say, no, we want our guy. Yeah. That makes me feel really confident in that pick because you know he got a ton of calls. And I'm, I'm, and I'm assuming that, with Levis still on the board. I'm assuming that value had to be really high too. With Mayer still on the board. Yeah, that that value had to be high for that pick. No doubt, and that it's just a a huge vote of confidence for JPJ. Yeah, and uh, you know, and we'll talk about the off season, but uh, Patrick Peterson was quoted saying, "I love this guy. I love his work ethic. He wants to be good. I can't wait to work with him." And I think that was a that was a big reason. They knew they were going to get a young corner. So bringing in Patrick Peterson to mentor that corner, I think, was a great move. JP, and then we want to talk about getting needs. Offensive tackle, okay, we said that. Cornerback, we said that. And then getting, uh, what, Keanu Brenson, Benson out of Wisconsin, D-tackle with the second pick in the second round. Three you for three on needs. You addressed three big needs. So, now we strayed from that with Darnell Washington. But that's, but that's like everyone's darling pick right now. Yeah, that was a home run pick in the third round. I mean, that man. guy is massive. He's 6'7", 270, and is athletic as ever. I mean, everyone talks about him. They're like, yeah, he's going to be a good guy. Get in there, you know, play some some 12 personnel and, you know, block. And then they cut to his highlight reel. He's making one-handed catch. Have you seen how small the football looks let's in his talk, hands? Let's talk about him. Let's talk about Darnell. Are they going to call Mount Washington, first of all? Oh. I heard that. Well, we've had some Washingtons before, but no one that big. And then the other thing, are they going to, when he catches it, is Dion he gonna, Washington? Is he going to get a Heath? Darnell? No. I don't know. Well, okay, that's, we'll see how that goes. You, we don't, we only do that for tight end one. Okay. Just, it's interesting. Okay. Two things about Darnell Washington that I really, really like. A. From a personnel perspective, you talk about with 12 personnel. What a matchup nightmare now the Steelers become. If within two tight end set, let's say Darnell with, with Muth, Pickens, stretch the field, Deontay run across the middle with Najee in the backfield on a play action. That's a matchup nightmare for linebackers. There's no linebacker that can guard a 6'7", 270-pound athletic freak like Darnell Washington. I mean, assuming he comes in and plays the way that we know he's capable of, yes. there is going to be no excuses for Kenny Pickett. That's a big factor. I think. I mean, I we'll have to get into this. But. Like, we're not gonna. We can have that conversation later. But I just to tease a little bit. You hear this with other guys. Like you hear from Lamar Jackson all the time. Well, who do you have around him? I don't think anyone can ever say that. Not now. Not with how they address the off season and address the draft. Kenny, there can't be any excuses now. No, they've drafted everyone you would possibly want. Can we go back to JPJ for a second, though? Sure. Imagine you're him. He didn't go to the draft, did he? I think. I'm not sure. But anyway, could you have imagined a better situation? Go to your dad's team. You're from Pittsburgh. Correct. Your dad played for the Steelers, won a Super Bowl. Legend. Steeler legend. One of my favorites. You stayed in state to play at Penn State. Correct. The Steelers signed Patrick Peterson, Hall of Famer. Correct. They lose Cam Sutton. 
Correct. They draft you, meaning you can start and learn from Patrick Peterson right away. It's a great. Scenario. I mean, it's geez, it, every every single thing broke his way. The only thing that didn't was he fell, so he lost a little bit of money from a personal perspective. But he's also a weird position, a thirty-two pick that doesn't have an option for a fifth year. Yes, that's a very odd pick, and it's all because Miami had to forfeit their pick. It's an interesting. So I mean, whatever. I mean, that I think we got great value on that. I I've seen people say he slipped because he's a little bit slow and out of his brakes. Little handsy. Little handsy. But man, I, I mean, he was going like top ten in some of these drafts. Well, let, let's get mocks. something straight off the bat. He played in the Big Ten, a pretty successful conference this year. For the sake of the argument, it's always. He didn't give up a single touchdown. That's an interesting fact. He did not give up one touchdown this year. Getting thrown to. I mean, the, and the Big it, Ten. It, I mean, we, we're we not talking like the Mac here. We can't have this conversation, though, without saying how bad we are drafting cornerbacks. Uh, can Ar- he break the curse? Artie Burns. Ricardo Coakley. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Justin Lane. Justin Lane <laughs> never, played. <laughs> never played. Isn't that incredible? Third round pick. Yeah. Sanquez Golson. Yeah, wow. Yeah, not good. Can Re- he break the curse? I mean, Cam Sutton was. Cam not, Sutton was a. Su- wasn't a super high pick, but he was he he worked out. Yeah. Um, well, on that note, I, we're, we're going to talk a lot about you know who we did bring in, who Omar, Omar Khan signed. Yes. But we sh- we have to talk about departures for a second. Okay, let's talk about it. Who are you going to miss the most? Um, who am I going to miss the most? Well, who who, who did we lose here? We lost uh, Derek Watt. Okay. I can live in that world. <laughs> You're starting with Derek Watt. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. We lost Cam Sutton. Big one. We lost – who else did we lose here? I Hopefully – Miles we, Jack may or may not be Miles back. Miles Jack, but now there's rumors that he's coming back. Devin uh, Bush, your boy. Devin Bush. Oh, I don't know what Seattle saw. I can't figure that one out. And I uh, – I think I mean, he might get cut. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to tell you who who I think that the Steelers are going to miss the most, but I think they addressed it very well in free agency with Terrell Edmonds. I think that the situation didn't work out in in the money and all that stuff, but he was a solid player for the Steelers on the back end with Minka, and he allowed Minka to do what. So I I, I would say Edmonds. I think they addressed it with signing KZ and bringing in Keanu Neal. Keanu Neal, big one. But I would say... Well, let me Edmonds. phrase it a different way for you. Go ahead. Where are we weakest? Because I, I have okay. a pitch. I would say the weakest part of the Steelers team right now would be their middle linebackers. Okay. Now... But I, I don't think anyone that we... But I, I thought that was the weakest part of our team last year. And who are our middle linebackers? Miles Jack and... Um, well, ended up with with my with my boy Robinson, and who else who else ran middle last year? Miles Jack and Devin Bush, and then Spillane, and Spillane. I feel like we might actually miss a little bit. I agree with that, but he got way he too could much. be the sneaky departure. He got way too, he could be, but he got a lot of money. How much money does Spillane get? Four or five a year from Oakland. That's that's a nice check. That's, I mean, good for him. I can't be mad at that. No, can't be mad. Yeah, I thought that was their. I think that's. That was their weakest. I think it's still their weakest. They brought in two new guys that are great run stoppers with Roberts and Holcomb. I, I really I mean it's. I don't like where we are with middle linebacker, but you every team is weak somewhere. Well, there's. Rumors, I, re, I don't really think there's anywhere else we're weak. There's rumors that Keanu Neal actually might play some nickel linebacker, dime linebacker. Now, are you a power rankings guy, Lou? No, hate them. No, I hate them. Not a fan. I don't care. Like uh, no. They're fun to look at. Okay. For you. Where do you think the last power ranking I saw had the Steelers? I'm not even going to credit. Th- I don't remember the credit on this, but it was so bad, I'm not going to credit. Last time you saw it as in when? Like on Twitter. Put, like you're saying like pre-draft? I saw it today. Oh, you saw it today? Okay. Draft picks included. Okay. Free agent draft pick included. Where I would put the Steelers right now, or no? Where, where do you think, think they, that? Where do you think people are putting them? I would hope they're putting them around fifteen. I think they should be ten right now. Twenty-two. Nah. Uh, Swear to you, behind like the Falcons. That's just so fucked up. 
It's wrong. 22. It's wrong. People are really doubting this team. I love it. I hope they keep doing. They addressed so many. They ad- let, let, let's just let's just go down the list in order. Might I add in order? Look, I'm just gonna. We don't have to talk about them, but let's just go down the list here. This is just free agent signings. People that they brought in: Patrick Peterson, Nate Herbig, great guy. Going to be your sixth lineman, swing guard, can play either position. Nasty Nate, as they call him. What does he do? Run blocks. Love that. Got his brother. Cole Holcomb and Landon Roberts. What do they do? Big physical middle linebackers that stop the run. There's a trend here, guys. There's a trend. Isaac Samolo started in the Super Bowl for the Eagles. Is now your new left guard. Love that pick. The Raven Clark, backup tackle. Keanu Neal. Love Keanu Neal. Keanu Neal's a star. He got hurt and he played for Atlanta. Bad situation. Him and Minka, unbelievable. Uh, Armand Watts, another D tackle that can help with the uh, depth of the line. Uh, Brandon Fajoko from No Sackle from the Chargers. Again, with the line. Brought in Tanner Muse. Tanner Muse is a standout uh, special teams guy from Seattle. Brought him in. Allen Robinson. Sneaky. Big name. Gave up a seventh round pick for him. Didn't have a quarterback. Also, last don't year have to pay his contract. Yeah. Out of his what? Out of his 20? I think we're paying five of it. Yeah, it's, it's very reasonable. We're paying five it's of it. Like the, the Rams are still paying most of it. They brought in a lot of guys. They brought in a lot of physical guys. They got run stopper guys. They built in the trenches. They continue that in the draft. That was the vision. That was the Andy Weedle Omar Khan vision. No doubt about that. I think they addressed a lot of stuff. So the fact that they have them 22 to 24, 22? 22, 21. Ridiculous. I think so. I think it's way too low. I, I it just, how, how could you watch how this team finished last season? It, right. And then crush the draft. I don't know. Really spend some, some serious money in free agency, manipulate the cap, and then put them at 22? I don't see it. I don't see it. I kind of like it, though. I like it. Oh, I, you know I love, you know I love it. I, you know I love it. I have I have a buddy of mine who will remain nameless. So the Steelers are going to finish fourth, fourth you can name in the him. division. No, you can name them. <laughs> I don't get mad. Uh, fourth in the division. I think that's an, an insanity. He's trying to. Is he a Steelers fan? No. Okay then. Um, look, I, let, on that note, let's talk about the division. Yeah, I a lot of people have Cincy like really high in these power rankings, like three. They've been good for a couple of years now. Sure. Seems high. For Cincy? Uh, yeah. Seems high, but I could see why they'd be great quarterback. projected to win the division. I could, I could see why. Not a great defense, but good offense. I get it. Who would you have second? Who do I have second? Yeah. In the division? Yeah. Well, I have the Steelers first. Who would you have behind Cincy, not kind of the Steelers? That's an interesting question, but I, I have to go Baltimore. I think Cleveland's a disaster. I think Cleveland's a mess. Me too. Okay. Let's talk about this real quick. In the future of this division, how this is going to go. I find this very interesting. Let's take the three teams, for example. Take Cincinnati first. Okay, Cincinnati had a nice little run with all these rookie contracts. But now, all these contracts need paid. Burrow, Boyd, uh, Mixon. Higgins. Higgins, Chase. You can't afford to keep everything. No way. And the way, and the problem is the quarterback. That's going to be a big point, big factor here. The quarterback is going to, Joe Burrow's going to make $50 million a year. There's no doubt about that. That kills a cap. That kills a cap. They're going to be in draft hell for a lot of years, and they're not going to be able to sign everybody. Cap hell. Cap hell. Sorry. Baltimore. Sign Lamar Jackson. $50 million a year. They are now in cap hell for the next five years of his contract because they're paying him so much. They had to release Patrick Queen today, an outstanding middle linebacker. Cleveland paid Deshaun Watson a ridiculous amount of money, gave up so much capital in the draft, and they are up against the cap. They cannot address how bad their defense is because they have no money left. They're in draft hell and cap hell for the next three years. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are taking advantage of of Kenny Pickett's rookie deal as a quarterback and spending the money elsewhere. It's it's what Baltimore didn't do when they were had Lamar on his rookie contract. They to had be, their opportunity. To be fair, since he tried to do it, they just came up a play short in the Super Bowl. That happens. 
I'm not saying the Steelers are going to win the Super Bowl because of this but their window, this situation. Cincy's window is closing quickly. Quickly, they're they're not going to be paid. Well, first of all, Mixon's not going to get paid because he's a running back. So we know that. whatever, take Mixon out of the conversation. Take him out. Whatever, they can find another running back. P. Ryan left too, by the way. I liked him. Boyd is never going to get huge money. I bet you. I bet you he's one of those guys like gets a Christian Kirk deal where you don't see it coming. I could see that. Christian Kirk's, by the way, kind of earned his deal. I, I get it. I get it. But anyway, that's like the ceiling for Boyd. Yeah, that would be way better than okay. his agent ever wanted. Okay. It's going to be between their two guys, which have been so deadly, Chase and Higgins. And that's you cannot keep both it's, those it's guys. It's impossible in the NFL to have both. Not impossible. when you have a fifty million dollar quarterback. That's the thing. You it's can't not possible. Spend... That's why. That's why Tyree kills in Miami. So there's no way you. Can... What you're saying, and I agree with you. Let's say Burrow gets fifty. I think that's very reasonable. Yeah. If Deontay Johnson makes eighteen, so let's just say Chase and Higgins make twenty. You can't spend ninety million on three players. Chase is going to ask for like 25. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's no way it's impossible. And how, how could you say no to him? They're well, not going to say no. They're going to they're gonna keep Chase and Burrow together forever. And, and everyone else leaves. Higgins will be gone. Exactly. So now, now, welcome to the life of everybody else in the NFL. Your top receiver is getting doubled now. It's nice to have other options when, when they, you know... It's tough to double someone when there's three. So how much does Claypool get from the Bears? Uh, Eleven. Uh, I don't know. That it's a disaster. What would you do if you were Chicago? You traded a. You he traded was. Joe. Basically, you traded Joey Porter Jr. for him. For Chase Claypool. And his his. You got to pay Claypool soon if you want to keep him. Which you traded a pick for him. You, you probably want to do a pick for him. Yeah. How That's, much money are they going to give him? Well, do you think? I think he's. Gonna, I use Deontay Johnson. He's going to get like fifteen million dollars a year. I use Deontay Johnson as a standard just because I know his deal. So I, I, I eighteen million is Deontay Johnson. So I kind of sure. fluctuate. Yeah. Off that. So if Deontay Johnson can make eighteen, okay, where do other receivers fall into place? Just Chase Claypool. I think fifteen is a very accurate. I'm just. I, I'm, accurate I'm just trying to make the point that we're living in a world where. Chase Claypool is going to make $15 million yes. from the Bears, and we get to have Joey Porter Jr. on a rookie deal. For the next four years. Yeah, yeah. That's where Omar Khan started the magic. That's where the magic of Omar Khan started, and it's just been been going up and up and up from there. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice. And not to mention how it played out that the Bears stunk so bad, and then Miami had to forfeit their pick because of all that stuff with Flores that went down, that you had the first – Round you had the first pick in the second round, arguably the thirty second pick in the first round. I thought they forfeited because of the tampering with Brady. Is that what it was? Yeah. I think well, so. I, well, I think Flores exposed it. Uh, maybe I don't know. It all happened that. around the same time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's talk about the Ravens now. I think we nailed Cincy. Yep. I made a whole video about the Lamar thing, and I called him the Draymond Green of the NFL. That's interesting. Why? And I said right away in the video, this is not about skill level or talent. Lamar is more talented uh, an athlete than Draymond Green is. Although some people call Draymond Green one of the best, best defensive players ever. Yeah, I And he's see. playing like it right now. Yeah. But oh, yeah. anyway, the point I was making was no other teams are offering him contracts. Correct. Because signing Lamar Jackson – to a massive contract. Massive. Quarter of a billion. It means you have to tailor your whole organization to him. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Joe Burrow. He's not Josh Allen. Any system these guys play in, they're going to be successful. Sure, absolutely. He's not your stereotypical. No. Yeah. He needs his way. You have to tailor your offense to him. You have to build the run game. You have to know that, look, we're, we're trying to get ahead in these games. If we have to play from behind. That's where trouble happens. We're not going to win these games. Right. He's like, you know, he's more valuable, this is the whole point, to his own team than to any other team. Well, notice that— Because you have to change the whole direction of your franchise. Notice what you said in the beginning. No other team was willing to offer him that type of contract. Okay, so let's— So for Draymond, he punches Jordan Poole in the face. Correct. The Warriors thought about trading him. I didn't know this, so I'm interested. Go ahead. 
He also is up for a contract at the same time as Jordan Poole. They give the money to Jordan Poole, which, Correct. honestly, Jordan Poole contract's bad, but that's not the point. The point is, Draymond's not going anywhere because he's not valuable to another team. No one else is looking for a guy that's going to score three points yeah. and start every night. Right. He, he works in the Warriors system. He's I, the leader of that team. Yes. He, he's worth way more to Golden State than he is to anyone else. Correct. Same as Lamar Jackson. Okay, yes. Totally but the point difference to. here is the Warriors know that. And they know Draymond doesn't have leverage, and they're not going to give him another gigantic max deal. No. Now, he's an older player, and he still might get some money, but they're not, they're not treating him like he's in his prime. They understand their position in this negotiation. Baltimore clearly didn't. No, they didn't. They messed that up. Why would you give him this contract after everyone else in the league passed? Why? What, that, what leverage did Lamar Jackson have? Their argument that I'm starting to see was if they franchised him, which was the only other option, right? If they franchised him, he could have gone to training camp on the first day, hurt his foot, and they would have paid him $30 million to not do anything. That's my understanding. After every team passed them up, this was their only option. And it put themselves in a terrible spot. Like I said earlier, because you signed Jackson, you already lost one of your so, best defensive players. So let me players. get this straight. You're worried about your franchise player and your potential, you know, let's, let's say this is weeks ago, your potential $250 million guy Faking an injury Correct. and, f- and f- defrauding you out of money. Correct. That's what they were worried about. Okay, then why would you pay a guy that you're worried about frauding you? Because they had no other option. Because You would, you would pay a guy that you're legitimately worried about faking yes. an injury and sitting down and frauding the organization. Yes. You would still pay that guy. Jason Luckenfora is all over this. He lives in Baltimore. He, uh, he is all over this, this whole situation. They screwed themselves up so bad. They lost Patrick Queen. He's one of the best middle linebackers no, in the NFL. I, over I, this. I agree they screwed themselves, but you're saying you would you would have given Lamar the money. Say, wait, say it. I said you would you have given him that knowing that this is a guy that would fraud you? No, I wouldn't have signed him at all. I, I okay, would, okay, I got I, you. Got I, I'm, you. I'm saying they knew that they couldn't win with Tyler Huntley. Okay, so in their Definitely. mind, their two options were we have to franchise him and knowing that He's looking for a big deal. He's probably not going to play, so he's going to defraud us. Or we sign him. We sign him for the contract that he wants, and that's our best way. That with our options in our, that's the only way that we can compete. Who were they bidding against? Themselves. So how do you end up at two hundred fifty million? Because that's what he would. I don't think if he, you're not bidding against anyone else. Because I don't. How think, do you end up there? Because I don't think he was going to sign for anything less. Then don't sign him. That's what I would correct. I I wouldn't have signed him. I would have took my took my medicine. We stink for a year. I mean, I'm I'm I sound mad, but I'm really not. I'm just confused. I'm very happy about the situation. Oh, I love Lamar Jackson Steelers. does not scare me. No, he's I think he's I think he's one and four against the Steelers. Something like that. One and five. He's really bad in the second half of seasons, especially yeah. in the cold weather, especially yeah. on third and long. He doesn't. And if he doesn't run the ball, and if he turns the ball over, he's very ineffective. And he's injury prone. He, he's he he hasn't got a knee or anything yet. And those quarterbacks, he's like an RG three. RG three had a better arm. I mean, still. look, I don't know what you want to say. Like, I don't know his medical history. I don't have his records, but I know he sits out a lot of games. Absolutely. And Tyler Huntley ain't the answer. That's for sure. <laughs> Lamar tough, too. It's a tough spot. <laughs> it's it. Baltimore. Put it's a great in the- position for the Steelers now. Yeah. The Bengals are about to be in cap hell. Yes. The Ravens are in cap hell. For the next five years. The, the Browns are already cap hell too. And the draft hell, they can't address anything because they gave up so many picks to bring Watson in. So Kenny has four years left on his contract. Correct. Steelers have four more years. The Steelers window of to a window. win the division slash the Super Bowl is four years. Once Kenny, if Kenny becomes great, or Kenny becomes good, or whatever you want to say, he's going to get paid a second contract. The Steelers then have to allocate those funds to the quarterback, which then you have to not use your funding for the rest of the team. That's where Baltimore messed up. That's what I was saying earlier, where Baltimore had Lamar on his rookie deal. They had five years to spend and allocate the money elsewhere, and their owner so cheap he didn't want to do that. That's the problem. The Steelers are taking advantage of the rookie quarterback deal like Cincinnati did. 
But Cincinnati got to the end of their window. The Steelers are just entering the window. That's the difference there. 100%. I mean, this it looks so good. There, are, There is 250 million reasons to be happy right now. Yes, 100%. Yes, absolutely. It's so good. I, I was hoping it would go this way, but it, it's weird. Like, when you read the takes out of Baltimore, they wanted this deal to get done so bad. I don't. They, I, it's like they haven't watched their own team. I don't think they understand the significance of a second year, a second contract for a quarterback. I don't. There's understand. only been one quarterback in NFL history to win the Super Bowl and, and eat up like 20% of the cap. Mm. It just happened. Mahomes. He's the only one to ever do it. See, but that's one of those things where. If I have to pay Patrick Mahomes a, ha- a quarter of a billion dollars, that's something I would invest in. We're talking about like a potential Mount Rushmore guy. Yeah, like you, you have, have to be very, very, very special. I don't think Lamar is even that's remotely on that level. And not to mention, when they signed Mahomes to this big contract, he already won a Super Bowl. He already won an MVP. You know what I mean? Like he proved he can win in the playoffs. He proved he can win in cold weather. He proved he can bring a team back. Like he proved all that, Jackson. Has has Jackson won a playoff game? I'm dead he, serious. He has won. He has one. One win. One playoff it's like win. One and three. And this guy's getting a quarter of a billion dollars. I mean, to your point is, Lou, what he, do they not see there? Lou, he sat the playoff game. Yeah, it's unbelievable. He sat the playoff game. Didn't even go to the game. Didn't play against the Steelers. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I I just don't understand why you'd be so anxious to sign that guy. And then bid it, and then bid against nobody, and give him exactly what he wants. And by the way, all this agent stuff. Oh, he doesn't have an agent. He saved a bunch of money. He saved like four million bucks, which is a lot of money. Like I don't mean to sound elitist here. I don't have four million bucks. Right, right. But dude, you just got two hundred fifty. Like yeah. maybe it would have been worth it to to have an agent and pay him that money and get this done, so you didn't have to hate everyone in the organization for five months. And did he request a trade? He had to request a trade. Like it was, it was a horrible, horrible thing. Like it's a bad... all for four million bucks. Like I, I'm sorry, I I can't get over this. His tax bill is going to be a hundred million. Like what's four million at that point? I, I I'm I'm sorry, I can't get over this. The fact that they signed him and had to release Patrick Queen, I can't get over it. That would be like the Steelers. See that, that would be like the Steelers signing Kenny through his demands for all this money, and because of that, they'd have to release Minka. That's the same type of level. Patrick Queen's a very good middle linebacker. Okay. Speaking of Minka. Minka, yes. That's a great way to get you just love, right into a good mood. There. I love him so much. Yes, it is. Go ahead. Let's talk about some roster predictions. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Who are you seeing as someone who can make a big leap this year? Someone who can make a big leap. And I know I teased that with Minka, but he couldn't qualify. There's no big leap that he can make. Correct. Um, uh, I mean, I think Pickens can make a big leap. I think Frymuth can make a bigger leap than he did last year. Um, I can. I think Najee can run 1,300 yards rushing with this new offensive line. But I think the biggest one is this, and this is going to determine the whole season. Can te- Can Kenny take the big leap? We saw flashes of it with the game against the Raiders and the game against the Ravens. Can Kenny take that next step? Or what would you want to see from Kenny? Well, I, he needs to be more consistent with his passes. Um, I think um, a little stagnant in the first three quarters, yeah? it's He comes to life in the fourth quarter, which is great. I just want to see that. the more I want to see more of attack the middle of the field. Um the stuff that I see in the fourth quarter, I kind of want to see in the first three. I think that's a big factor. This team's going to go as Kenny goes. There's no doubt about that. Now, judging by Kenny's offseason grind, which yes. I've been keeping. Put on like 20 pounds of muscle too, yeah. Exactly. He put on a lot. Of, he looks noticeably bigger. Yes. And he is. So that tells me that he's trying to stand in there. He, he had you know injuries last season, but they're mostly concussions. Correct. What I think Kenny's saying to himself is, I need to be able to stand in there in this division, take the hits, and deliver. Not that he can't do that right now, but he's like, if I'm going to play 10 years in this division, mm-hmm. 15 years in this division, mm-hmm. I can't. I got to play at a higher weight. I got to be able to stand in there and take these blows. Well, the Steelers did all they did to help him, yeah. Broderick Jones, Samolo. I mean, the Steelers addressed the offensive line. They addressed 
they addressed his blind side, his guard, and his tackle. I mean, so, like, I think everyone's on the same page here. I think what you're saying is Kenny realized he had to get bigger and stronger. The Steelers realized we got to protect him. Because if we get into this whole concussion shit, that could be a disaster. He's got two already. And that's my point. Correct. I mean, who knows how many of these guys really have, to be honest. Who do you, well, I know, right? Who do you think needs to take a, st- a step or, or not needs to, but who do you think will take another step forward? You think it's more on the defense side of the ball? Yeah, I was just going to say. I, I don't want to say one of the skill position guys because I it's just so easy to say any Absolutely. of those guys. Yeah. Um, But I want to say Deontay Johnson. Well, well, for sure he needs to have more it's touchdowns. Just, it's just really – it's really hard to have a guy who's making eighteen million on your team. That's see, that's why I love. There's a lot of rumors that they were going to try to move him in the draft. I just, there is a leap for him to make. There is. Yes. He, he's not one of these guys. It's like a, you know, he's not on TJ Minka, Cam, Cam level. He's not that guy. He no one no one says Deontay Johnson's one of the top ten receivers. I don't think he is. But could he be? He could be. He could be like eight to ten range. He could be. Yeah, I mean, I think his 10, ceiling is 15. that. Yeah, so, his ceiling, his ceiling. Yes, correct. So I think there's a leap to make for him. And last season was so disappointing. I mean, game like performance and emotionally. Yeah. Like we talked in several pods about how he's frustrated. He's yelling at teammates, causing yeah. fights in the locker room. Like, I think he was out of whack last year, and that, that he can put that all in the past. Score some touchdowns well, I think and that, have like twelve hundred yards. I, I think, think like that's the lead. I think the fact that Kenny's coming in as the guy this whole year, we get all the first team reps, training camp, all the first team reps. I think that's gonna do a lot for everybody. I think it's gonna but here's the thing. It, it pains me to say this, but it's just how it is in all of sports, not just football, not just the Steelers. It's a contract year now for Deontay Johnson. A lot of these athletes, for whatever reason, up their game, which drives me crazy. Or they go crazy when their game is not up. Right, but that drives going to be on edge all year. That drives me crazy because I think you, if you can prove to me you can play at that level, you should play at that level all the time. But whatever. So it's a contract year now for Deontay. So that's I think that's going to. So like you're saying to the frustration, is that him not getting the ball? Is that gonna? Is that? Are you gonna see him more go diva, knowing that it is his contract? Year? I'm I'm saying he can make a leap like, performance and emotionally. Like, gotcha. You you shouldn't have those things happen to you. Like that's. It's but a his bit, frustration. It's immature. Could get worse. Um. All right, Lou. Buckos. They deserve some of our airtime. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What? What? I'm a certainly start not to gonna season. talk about the pens. No. No. What a start to the season, huh? Unbelievable. Great start. Didn't expect this, really. Didn't expect the lumber company to come back. Didn't expect the starting pitchers, what they had, like 15 consecutive like quality starts. People that don't know at home, that's six innings pitched with under four earned runs. It's outstanding. And we got to give some love to Swinski. Yeah, He's man. been my favorite player. Swinski started he off. He has delivered, man. Started off bad. Started off bad, was nervous that this, this was too big for him. Then he was smack, 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 smack. I mean, he's playing like one of the best outfielders in the whole National League. Love him. Love G1 Bay, man. Can that kid fly? Have you been to games? Have you been to games I yet? Been, I watch him. I mean, that been kid to... can fly. So, the, so first of all, baseball is so much better with the pitch clock. My God, is it better? It, it moves. It's different for me. I have to adjust to it. I have it's to so much to better. It. But one of the biggest things you notice when you're at the game is the intro songs are about four seconds long. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Bay comes up to two alternating songs. He comes up to A Bay Bay. The hur- nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes up to the Hurricane Chris song and then he has that other song. I don't know what it's called, but it's I look like Bay. <laughs> yeah. It goes be- it goes between those Love two. It. It's so good. Dude, yeah, he leads the league in steals. I I've never seen a, a team steal as much as the Pirates. I've never seen a team steal second and third. Can, I, and I've never seen it. It's and most of this is happening without Cruz. It, that was their turning point in the season. You lost O'Neal Cruz. It could have went one of two ways. They could have packed it in and said, hey, we lost our star. We lost our best player. We lose. Time Every, to tank. Everyone's going to blame it on him and life's okay. But they got better. They put it on themselves. 
Derek Shelton's doing an excellent job managing this team. The bullpen has been great. Um, they're situationally hitting the ball. Santana's like an RBI machine. Veteran presence. I, I love this team. I, I tell, we have a separate pirate text group. I love this team, man. I love them. I think you got to give credit to, and we got to, I, I have to say some good things about Bob Nutting. G- go ahead. I have to. I mean, it's only fair. Like, it, it, when I'm really critical of someone, I, I try to point it out when I when I like it. Yeah. And how can you not like what he's done? I mean, he bringing back Kutch, I mean, it looked like he was kind of just like... Trying to fill seats? Totally. It looked like that, but I think what you just said with, okay, this can go one of two ways, disaster strikes. With a guy like Kutch and the team... I don't think it's going like that. You mean like, like bringing bring in a he's, veteran He's presence. been here for 99 win seasons. I I think having Kutch and Carlos Santana, they're not going to let that happen. Those are mature baseball players. Those are big leaguers. You know what kind of that remind, you know what, you know what bringing in McCutcheon reminds me of was when they brought in Burnett. A.J. Burnett kind of changed the whole philosophy when in that they got – notice they bring in Burnett. Those those three years where they won 97, 95 games, made the playoffs. Kutch reminds me of that, that veteran presence coming in. So I, I'm not, I'm not even done yet. Go keep going. Last year we did keep Ryan on opening day, okay. Which I think we celebrated a little bit too much. He's he's a nice player and I'm happy he's here, but he's, I looked it up. He's like the 150th highest paid player in baseball. It's not like we unloaded the great Brinks truck for him. Great fielder. I yeah, but it, it, we're we're acting like you know, you know, it's a good deal. It's yeah, a good deal. it's a long term deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. I like the deal. But we acted like he just unloaded. He didn't unload, but it's, again, good signing. We did it this year at Reynolds. Yes. First 20 games of the season, we finally signed Reynolds after he'd been requesting a trade. Mm-hmm. Got the $13 million for Reynolds. I thought that was a steal. Really nice deal. Mm-hmm. We're actually signing long-term deals now. Hopefully Cruz is next. I think if he wouldn't have got hurt, I think that would have been the plan. And I think they will do it, but it would have been sooner than later. I, mean, I see what you're saying. You're saying you're giving nothing credit for actually making And then I have these... one more thing. Oh, Frank, you're on fire. Did you see what the Pirates did around PNC Park? No, no I haven't. There's that parking garage. That's It's kind of by home plate. Yep. They bought up a bunch of the surrounding land, like 30,000 square feet of surrounding land, like right around home plate. And they're going to make it like into fun things, bars and restaurants. and Like a pirate theme. Yeah, thing. like a little event center and like... Dude, they're investing in the North Shore. Like that is obviously a great sign. That yeah. tells you that they want to spend money because all of that land, that thirty thousand square feet they bought, it's going to be a tank investment if you don't win games. If no one's there. If no one's there, you're not going to make money. I think it's going to be interesting to see. With that being said, how where this team's at at the deadline? Do they go out and get the guys that they need a starting pitcher or two? Do they – I mean, we're so used to getting the deadline and selling everybody. Look, we have prospects to trade. Now we do. We do. I mean, we have we have two catchers that we can move. Yeah, because you have two guys coming up. Um, look, there's moves to be made. I'm just happy that we can revisit this in the middle of July and be like, these games are still meaningful. Who would have these, thought? These games, like, we, the division is still in the palm of our hands. It's We're within I, – I don't see a world in which we're not within three games of the division in mid-July. So you we're th- so many games ahead you don't of think that now. You don't think that there's a collapse? I mean, look, we might not keep up this winning pace. Which is insane. But I, I, I think we're so far ahead now. We're number one in the National League. Who would have thought? 30, we're, we're almost 30 games in. We're number one in the National League. I think we're 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 killing it so much now that we by middle of July we have to still be making it interesting. Who would have thought this? We're doing this podcast on May second. Okay, we're a month into the season. Who would have thought that this Pirates be opening up a series against the Rays tonight in Tampa Bay, and it'd be the two best teams in baseball going at it? Who would have thought that ever would have came out of our mouths? It's unbelievable. The two best teams in baseball are in a three-game series tonight, and it's the Pirates and the Rays. I might have to go to – that. That's amazing. We're not home, are we? No, it's in. It's okay, in, it's in. okay. Thank God you wouldn't want to go in this weather. I, that, would, I would go in this weather. Isn't this unbelievable? It's great, man. I yeah. never would have thought – I said this last night. 
I never would have thought this this would be a time where we're talking about how great the Steelers offseason was, how excited we are for the season, how great the Pirates are playing right now, and the Penguins are the team that didn't make the playoffs and seem to be in disarray. Totally. I never thought... Well, especially how the Penguins started the season. I never thought this would be the conversation. Penguins not in the playoffs. First uh, time in 16 years. It just felt so weird not to Wasn't have them in odd? there. I think it's odd. Hockey playoffs have been great. Not going to be upset about it. I, it's tough for me to watch. It's tough for me to get on board with the pe- with the playoffs for NHL without the Penguins. You watch an NBA? It's weird. I have been. Big game from Harden last been night. Been the NBA. I that was one of the... the NBA. I'll, I'll give my one NBA take and we'll end the pod. I've never seen James Harden play a better game. I think he, he tied he, for career. And I'm really critical of James Harden. He stepped up. That but, wasn't anybody who didn't watch the game. Look up the highlights on YouTube. He had like 45 points at the game when he shot. Everyone told him all season, oh, you can't score anymore. That was incredible. With that beep out, he had to step up. Yeah, that in was Boston. A, tied his career high, I believe, for most playoff points. In yeah. Game. So that's a quick playoff wrap-up of all the sports. That, yeah, we just <laughs> we summed, did it all real quick. We there. summed it up right there. <laughs> all right, Lou. All right, buddy.